Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for watching another update of the Desert Green Pearl Barn Find Audi TT Mark 1. In this video, now that the replacement engine's been cleaned up, I've had a quick look inside to see that everything's looking pretty good. I will be cracking on and doing an unboxing of the max speeding rods as well as the ACL bearings, just making sure they're all going to fit up quite nicely. Then what I'll do is crack open the head, remove that from the engine and get on with upgrading the rods. I just want to check out these max speeding rods and do a bit of an unboxing for you guys. So the box that you get is quite a sturdy looking box with their max speeding rods logo on the front there and it's kind of like shiny gold. Looks pretty good to me. When you open it up you've got this like foam that's usually there. Little in Introduction booklet, instruction booklet, I guess. Oh, it's not even a booklet, it's just like a sheet. And then on here, you've got a set of instructions there as an installation guide and then some tightening specs there, depending on what fasteners you've spec these out with. I just got these with the standard ones uh, on order. Then you've got the rods. So, go, you can see that they come in these like cut out pieces of foam, which is really, really good. So yeah, you'll see they're wrapped in this plastic. And there's a little staple in the end to show it's not been tampered with. Let's move this box out of the way. All right, so now you can really see that plastic sheath. Get that staple out so it doesn't look stabby. So this is a good sign that it's sealed in that plastic and then you've got this other um, wrapping around it that keeps the metal from degrading or getting rust on it because this it's like it looks like grease proof paper uh, it's covered in oil a thin layer of oil and there you go you've got the rod inside so it's pretty hefty it's like a good good solid weight in my hands and overall it looks really really good um, just like what the ads state you got a little sort of oil lubrication hole there. So these are not rifle drilled, but I got them for a really good price. So I thought, you know what, why not? So here they all are, all in a row. So you can see they're all looking pretty uniform. The logo looks excellent. Quality looks excellent. Now these are the bearings that I'm going to be using, ACL race bearings. And this is good because they're made in Australia. So you get eight of them, obviously one upper one and one lower one. And here are the rod bearing shells. They're all the same and they all look pretty good. You can see that it's got the uh, tang here on the side. You would have noticed that on the rods there's a little notch in the inner sort of surface and that's where these tangs sit so that the bearings can lock themselves in. So enough messing around. I'm super excited to get these in. The next part where we'll go into the garage again and get that 1.8 T opened up so that we can install these. So we're back in point of view mode here. I've already taken off a whole bunch of things as you saw in the previous videos. Both manifolds are off, all the wiring's gone. And I've also make sure, made sure to have the timing on top dead center here. So now everything's ready to take off. Once all of the 10 mil nuts have been removed, there are nine of them, the cam cover can come off. And we'll take these cam caps along with us as well. Now we're going to be able to get to the head bolts. There's 10 of them. So with these head bolts, there's one in there, one in there, one in there, one in there, one in there. And then on the opposite end here as well. I might stand on this side so the shade doesn't get us. And what, the, what it is, what the tool is, is a special sort of tool. It's called a 10 mil poly drive or a ribe bolt. I can see that mine is from T and E tools. So when you're cracking these bolts loose, there is a specific order to them. So you can see that uh, this end is 10. That's the fourth one, second one, six, eight, then seven, five, one, three, nine. So we do this in reverse order, basically. And 
one to make sure that they're seated in nicely so you can see there you go that's nice and locked in there but I'm not backing all the way out just yet and from there on that's when you can use your rattle gun okay now that's done it's gonna get my magnet tool to get all those bolts out and just really quickly before I slip this timing belt off just double make sure all these marks are aligned which they are and up here red and I always like to make like a, another one just to make sure it lines up perfect on refitting the belt let's do it there all right so that can come off so now that all the timing gear is off I had to make sure I wound this back a little bit and the crank as well because as you saw it kind of slipped when I was trying to undo that um, pulley bolt but now everything's off the head is ready to be removed so I've just got to brace myself for this just because these are a little bit heavy but here we go yep that's definitely ready to come off Ugh. got a nice good view of the head and some channels that need cleaning so up. This thing has definitely seen like it's seen better days, but that's okay. What I'm here to do is clean it all up. So I'll take off this head gasket. Whoa, it's crunchy. Okay, so time to get cleaning. I've just got a little um, dishwashing pad here and I'm gonna spray the two top pistons with degreaser. Already they're like cleaning up. Yeah, so this is the good beer. We'll get the oil pan off. So then we're gonna have to disassemble all of this. Yeah, so this is getting to the bit where we get the actual rod and piston out from the block. So they're a 14 mil nut. I'm hoping that you can see them here. So these are the middle pistons here. You've got two and three, so we can undo those quite easily. Um, and then I've kind of like loosened up the oil pump as well. I don't think I really needed to, but we'll see. We'll have to just crank that a little bit uh, to then be able to remove the other ones. So the lighting is a little bit tricky here, but I'm hoping that you guys can see. Go. Probably should have just taken that off. Now the oil pickup tube's been removed, there's more space to be able to fit something in, make sure it's plastic, to push down the rods and take them out from the cylinder bores. Same thing here. Number two. Should be able to get them. Yeah, this engine's good to go. Yes. And number one. I've cleaned up the pistons a little bit more around here. There's like a lot of dirt, so that's all gone. But now that we're here, what I need to show you is how we're going to separate the piston from the OEM rod and swap them back. So in this 
circle or in this hole you'll see that there's like a circlet little circlip there you can see so that has to come out and then you're able to slide the wrist pin so this is the wrist pin here you're able to slide that out and then you can disconnect the conrod from there and this is this is the BAM engine this is the 20 20 mil wrist pin which is more desirable all right I'm gonna try and do this I'm not gonna do that up here let's do it down here just so I make sure <laughs> this circlip doesn't ping away which they can do because they're in there under tension so just kind of comes out like that whoops see that how it kind of like flung out a little bit okay so now the circlips are removed that wrist pin can come out maybe it's the other way why isn't it coming out should be able to come out let's try and hit it a little bit yep go so it's coming out of that end there you can see just keep hitting it out so that you can and because that's out you can see how that connecting rod um, is um, kept into place by the wrist pin and I'm able to then replace this with the forged max speeding one all right so just so I've got everything facing the right way there's an arrow here that you can see on the piston top that arrow faces toward the timing belt when installed it's placed on the exhaust side of the block. Now, the orientation of the tang in the rod big end is important. You want this to face the intake side of the block. So this meant when installing the rod, the tang is on the opposite side of the arrow or the side where the relief is on the piston crown, which is the intake side. Now we know which way to install these, it's time to get the assembly lube. So assembly lube, I'm just going to do these one by one, oops, so that was a lot, don't need that much, and because these are oily already, that's really good, and it's just a matter of lining it all up again, pushing that through. You want to push the wrist pin in as far as possible in order to install the wire lock. This is the funnest, inverted commas, part of the job. Installing the wire lock or wrist pin circlip takes a bit of skill, but once you've got the knack for it, you'll get them in pretty quickly. The method that worked best for me is to have a small flathead screwdriver handy and without gloves. Insert the lock wire with the gap facing the top of the piston. Insert it in the side opposite to the little notch. While covering the wire lock, use a screwdriver in the notch to compress the circlip. You want to use the notch as a leverage point while pushing down with your finger that's covering the wire lock. It should clip itself into the groove. Now once a circlip's installed, it's good to rotate the gap to the opposite end of the notch. Grab another screwdriver and stick it into the wrist pin hole. Use your little screwdriver against the big screwdriver to turn the wire lock into your desired position and then move on to the next piston. So here it is again. Sometimes it might not go in all the way, and if this happens, keep your finger on it, then keep pushing down into the groove with your screwdriver where it's raised up a little bit. Q. 
Okay, so these rods have an 11 mil bolt head. So I'm just gonna un undo them all. So it's nice and easy. All right, now to split them apart, just gonna grab your hammer and kind of knock. So you can see that the gap is opening up there. Cool. Okay, so now that everything has been reassembled, I'm just going to quickly clock the rings here. One of them is facing this way towards me, the other one is there, and the other gap is that way on all of them now. Now that all the pistons and rods are prepared, I just wanted to show you a quick comparison between the OEM rods and the upgraded ones before installing them into the engine. <laughs> now that a whole lot of the assembly of the rods and stuff is all done, it's time to pop them all back in. So just making sure these gaps are in the right spot. Top one there, second one is there, last one is towards me. And this little arrow points to the front, front of the block towards the timing gear. Let's get some oil on this compressor tool. Now I know this isn't the best tool, but I've got to work with what I've got. That is probably the tightest it's got to go. One. So you kind of now have to push the newly installed piston and rod up and just guide it into place so that when you push, push this guy back on, it goes right onto, right onto the journal there of the crank. on the same side. Yep. Tang goes on the same side as the other tang. So there's that little bit that's notched out in the rod cap and there's the tang on that side. So they match up. Now with these bolts, didn't have any ARP lube so I've got this pen right molly grease stuff it looks very very similar to the ARP lube so that stuff there looks exactly the same actually it's like a black sort of grease so there it is it looks exactly like the ARP stuff to me it's very very sticky probably way too much on this one okay now I like to do these kind of evenly, so do a little bit there, do a little bit more on the other side, do a little bit more on the other side before talking them up. The rod bolts, just gonna do them again, each one bit by bit until we get the right. There we go. Lovely. So now that first one is on. Let's give it a little bit of a run. Make sure it's not tight. Yes. That still feels nice and smooth, which is excellent. Okay, next one we'll do cylinder one. 
So <laughs> I think I'll definitely take the oil pump off. Remove the cog on the end here, T40. Oh, what? Wow, that just stripped out. But I had to hammer in a T45. And now I'm able to get the sprocket off there. So annoying. Now we're just able to remove, remove that. Okay, now we've got access. Okay, so we'll do piston number one now, since that's at the bottom of its travel. And the arrow, again, always facing that way. We'll just make sure our ring gaps are in a good spot. Get the tool again. Shimmy, oops, just shimmy the tool up. So that it's at the bottom, near the bottom. Oil scraper ring, and that it's nice and even. Okay. Lovely. All right, so the same thing. Feeling good. All right. So now that cylinder one has been upgraded, I'm going to reinstall the oil pump. This is a new one where <laughs> luckily I've got a fresh bolt for as well. So basically all you want to do is pop this back on and kind of like estimate where the little it's like a not a perfect circle there there's a sort of straight bit which helps to key it to the right angle on the oil pump itself so just kind of guess but you can adjust this in a second which you'll see so put that where it should go and then line up line up the thing so you've got to just Push on the tensioner there, so you're able to put the cog um, all the way back. But you can see that's a little bit not right. So I need to turn this one more to the left. Let's see how that goes. Nope, still not. Let's do that. Cool. And then that pushes. You can see that's pushing on there then I can release the tensioner and I'll just do these hand tight for now don't actually know what the actual torque spec is strip the bolt actually killed the bottom one before. <laughs> it's a T45, not a T40. Okay, number three. 
Amazing. Now to torque up the ARP 2000 bolts properly, after the first torquing, you actually want to loosen them up, then re-torque back to the proper spec, and then loosen them up again. So you're re-torquing three times for each bolt. And now that everything's installed, I'm just turning over the engine by hand to see how everything feels. And it feels really, really good. Now that everything is installed and everything moves freely, I'm just going to torque up the oil pump bolts again. So they're at 15 Newton meters, 15, 15. Now I'm going to get this little tray thing. So this one's also 15. So it feels like I'm making some really good progress now that the engine's been cleaned up, the rods have been upgraded with new shells, and now all I need to do is wait for the head gasket kit to come so I can piece that engine back together again. And I think pretty much after that, it'll be almost ready to be reinstalled back into the Desert Green Pearl Barnfine Audi TT Mark I. Exciting times, can't wait for that to happen. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more updates for this awesome Mark I Barnfine TT.